In this video, you will learn how to replace the bonnet and poppet of a 765-1 Fepco PVB. Hi, Alfred Castillo here, the Sprinkler Warehouse Pro. I got a question to ask you. Have you ever woke up one wintry morning, gone outside and realized you are standing and sloshing in some water? You look to your left and all you see is some contraption here that has water spewing out and this cap or bell umbrella looking thing on the ground. Well, don't worry, it happens to a lot of us and that just means we did not properly winterize this particular piece of equipment. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to fix this particular one. This contraption here is actually called a pressure vacuum breaker. What this is, is it's our backflow preventer so it allows flow of water from your supply to go through this, go to the flow here and into your valves so that it uh, it waters and irrigates your lawn. Well, what happens during a winter, when the winter is that if we don't properly winterize it, water will get caught up in this particular area under pressure. And when water freezes, of course, it expands. And so as a result of the expansion, this particular piece actually fractured. And so that's what that's why this particular bell was on the ground or the umbrella. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to replace this part. The model is actually 765. This is a, a manufacturer's Febco. Dash one is actually the size of this particular uh, PVB. Most houses will have these in their, in, in their sprinkler system. So 765-1 is common, 99% of homes. We might have, uh, you might have something like this, which is again, Febco 765, no dash behind it. Essentially means it is three quarters, but so we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace the parts uh, from Febco, the bonnet and poppet assembly kit, which you can pick up right here at Sprinkler Warehouse. And it contains the, uh, it contains the bonnet, it contains the poppet, and as well as some lubricant or some uh, grease that we're gonna talk to you a little bit about. Well, let's go ahead. The challenge that we can encounter is, is taking off the, uh, the broken uh, bonnet. And how to do that is, uh, you can, number one, the easiest way to do it is by hand. So if it's not too tight, you can actually just manually loosen it, take it off by hand. If it is tight, then you can use a, a set of pliers for leverage uh, or a wrench to try to pry that thing open using these little handles that they have here. Uh, if that doesn't work, then you could actually use a, a screwdriver uh, and apply that right here. You'll see some grooves around the bonnet. And when you use the screwdriver and a hammer, that should be able to pry that open or loosen that so you can be able to twist it. If that doesn't work, you can grab you a pair of channel locks. And these particular channel locks will fasten, you can fasten them right around the bonnet itself. Careful not to squeeze or apply pressure on the actual brass. You don't want to damage this because you don't want to replace that. That'll cost you a lot more than having just to replace the assembly. And if that doesn't loosen it up, then as a last resort, you can actually grab you a uh, hacksaw and you can cut it in a few pieces to shatter it, you know, to start shattering or breaking it up. You can cut it in, in a couple pieces, maybe like a peace sign, cut one at the top and maybe two at the angles. And then with a hammer and a screwdriver, you can just kind of tap it out till it breaks out and then pull it out. But we'll go ahead and loosen it up, pretend we did all those measures and we were able to loosen the actual bonnet. And you can see here is that I loosen up there is a difference between the brand new bonnet that we're gonna install and this one here. As you can see, these little, these little legs, contraptions, are, are on this particular piece here, not on this one, but it's designed to fail that way. That's what we're gonna replace. So this is the old bonnet that's replaced, and here's the actual legs that broke off from the bell, the bonnet there. Inside the PVV is also the, um, you'll see here is the poppet, that's what it's called. And this compared to the new pop, as you can see, it's worn away, it's missing its O-ring, and it's fractured. Again, because of the, the water, uh, when it freezes, it expands, and so as a result, you have this fracture. So we don't know where it's happening, but we're gonna replace that as well. And then what, while we're already here, we're gonna go ahead and inspect the rest of the internals. And I'll go ahead and loosen this up. There's this little metallic groove that holds down the Christmas tree spring that holds that in place. And you'll see the actual check valve. This check valve has failed. As you can see, the new check valve has a couple of guides or legs that go into the pipe itself, and this one has fractured. Again, you don't know what would happen, what's gonna happen when water freezes, where failures will occur, but it's a good thing to check at all pieces to ensure that you can uh, replace everything so it works properly. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this uh, check valve with a new check valve, and we're gonna go ahead and slip that in there. 
as I get that into the groove. That's there. And then we're going to go ahead and put back the Christmas tree spring. This, this should be in good condition, but it's not. You, you can also pick one of these up. Uh, it's it's, it's not, uh, not much at all. So we'll go ahead and replace that. You can reuse it if possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the groove back on there to compress the spring and the check valve in its place. This can get a little tricky to uh, insert it, but if you insert it a proper way, it should be able to fasten and groove itself into the this uh, PVB, and I've done that already on my first try. Sometimes it takes me a couple of times, so if you try it and you don't get it the first time, don't get frustrated, uh, it'll work. So now that I have that in place, I'm ready to go ahead and install my poppet into the hole. And in this particular kit, it comes with a grease or a lubricant, and that grease or lubricant, uh, it, you can apply that on the O-ring. It's supposed to enhance the life of the O-ring, and so um, you can go ahead and put that on there, and we'll put that poppet in there. And then we'll go ahead and install the bonnet. And this bonnet here comes with a new nut that we'll use. And I'll go ahead and take this off because we'll reuse that and put that as part of our new assembly with the, with the cap or with the umbrella at the bell. And so I'll go ahead and install this. Make sure it's nice and snug in there. You got your O-ring. You can also apply some of that grease and apply it in the O-ring before you tighten that. And then we'll go ahead and remove the broken bonnet that we have here. And it also comes with a new nut, so we'll go ahead and put the new bell on top of the bonnet and we'll tighten that up. There's no need to tighten it fully because what you do want is you want to be able to have this bell uh, turn in circles. You want to be able to, to have that loose enough, but then you don't want to tighten it too much as well because you don't want to break the actual bonnet, and then we'll start over, all over again, replacing, uh, replacing this uh, bonnet. So just enough to tighten it up, just so it gets it snug, and then you're still able to swivel and turn this around. Thank you for watching our video on how to replace a bonnet and pop it on our Febco 765-1 model. Feel free to leave a comment and let us know what other subjects you are interested in learning about. For more information about preparing your backflow preventer for freezing temperatures, watch the video Winterizing Your PVB located on the video's webpage.